Hey class, this is Mr. Roberts at Shasta High School with a, hmm, a relaxing scene, but maybe a bit of a disconcerting problem. So this is an exponential equation. We know that it's an exponential equation because the variable lives in the exponents. And we're going to solve this thing. And to start with, remember our, our main tool for solving exponentials is when we look at them, we need to figure out a way to rewrite each of the bases of these exponents, so the 1 half, the 4, and the 8, so that they're all the same base. So we're going to change the bases so that they're all um, exactly the same. Once our bases are the same, there's all kinds of things we can do to combine and simplify these things. So let's start with the fact that my bases are 1 half, 4, and 8. And I immediately think about a lot of things, right, when I see those numbers. I think, let's start looking at bases that have two. So I could have two, two, ooh, ooh, two, no writing, two. Just a moment, my ink has run out. Okay, I think it's working. So I've got two. Two to the zero power is the number one. Two to the first is two. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16. And these, these continue this way. And I could look at some negative exponents. 2 to the negative first power is 1 half. If I continued, 2 to the negative second power is 1 fourth. So being able to look at, <clears throat> look at uh, different powers of 2 and see all those things is an important kind of prerequisite. Uh, knowledge. Now, an interesting thing happened. I can see that one of the things I had was one half. Well, I've got the one half over here, and I know that that's equivalent to two to the negative first power. Another thing I see is I've got this uh, four. Well, uh, there's a four that lives right here, and two to the second power is four. And the other thing that I see here is I've got this uh, eight. There's this base of 8 right here. There's an 8. And 8 is the same thing as 2 to the third power. So if I rewrote these as powers of 2, I could write 1 half is 2 to the negative first raised to the x power times 4, which is 2 to the second. And that's being raised to the x minus 2 power. And that equals 8 which is 2 to the third, and that's being raised to the x plus 1 power. So as I go through here and I raise powers to a power, right, as I use this, this uh, rule of exponents, a power raised to a power, these all simplify. The first part becomes 2 to the negative x times, the next part becomes 2 to the 2x minus 4 power. So if you look what I did there, <clears throat> yeah, I multiplied both this 2, 2 times x and 2 times negative 2 to get this new uh, exponent. And on the other side, I've got 2 to the third, and that's being raised to the x plus 1. So that's going to be 2 to the 3x power plus 3. So what's beautiful about this is... I can do something now. I can do a lot of things, right? One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to look at now that these are both the same bases over on this left-hand side. I have 2 to the negative x times 2 to the 2x minus 4. The rule is if you're multiplying things, you would add these exponents, right? If, if I think about this, if I had, for example, uh, a to the third power times a to the second power, that would be the same as a to the 3 plus 2 power. So just as in I can add the 3 and 2 to get 3 plus 2 or 5, right? I can add this negative x and this 2x minus 4 and combine these two um, collection of factors. So this is going to become 2 to the x minus 4 power. That's beautiful. And on the other side, that's the same as 2 to the 3x plus 3 power. All right, so now if I look at it, I have an equation where my bases are both 2, and I know that the only way that these are actually going to be equal to each other 
is if this exponent, right, is equal to this exponent. So I'm just going to solve by setting these exponents equal. So x minus 4 must be the same as 3x plus 3. Therefore, if I take away x from both sides, negative 4 has to be the same thing as 2x. And if I take away 3 from both sides, negative 7, negative 7 has to be the same thing as 2x. And if I divide by uh, 2, uh, negative 7 halves is x, or x is negative 3.5. So x is negative 3 halves. And I can check that answer in, in several different ways, right? One of them will check it with the calculator. But one of the things I like is if I go, if I do go to Desmos and I take a look at it, in Desmos, um, I typed this in, and it was a little difficult to type in in Desmos, Desmos because I had four to this power. I had to use uh, parentheses up here to ensure that, that I stayed in the exponent. But when I... Um, when I do this and I graph this, I can see that the graph turns out it's between negative 3 and negative 4. Now what's interesting is that Desmos is not able to resolve this and tell me with any certainty that it's at um, negative 3.5 exactly. Normally if I click on a curve, it'll put a dot there, but it's like, mm, I'm not going to call that. But it's certainly a good visualization for the work that I did on paper to see that x was negative 3.5. Uh, the other way that would be a great way to check this would be to just use my calculator. So if I pull up uh, our calculator, we can take a look at this. Um, so I think the best way to approach checking this is I'm going to enter negative 3.5 and put that on the stack. So I'm going to have a fraction of 1 half. So here's 1 half. And I'm going to raise that to the go grab the negative 3.5 power. Okay. Leave the exponent. I'm now going to multiply that by this base of 4 to the power of, and then I'm going to open this up, open parentheses up. I'm going to go grab what x is again. Got it. And I'm going to subtract 2 from that. So what you've seen me do here is type in very specifically, um, that I've got the uh, I've got the one half being raised to the x power. I've got the four to the x minus two power. Now this is going to give me what the left hand side is, and when I press enter, I can see that the left hand side. Oops, let's press enter. The left hand side is this decimal, right? Now my expectation, and my only expectation, is that if I evaluate the other side, I'm going to see the same decimal. So I'm going to just take eight. And I'm going to raise that to the power of, open parentheses, I'm going to go grab the negative 3.5, and I'm going to add the number 1 to that, close parentheses, and press enter. And I can see, yeah, exactly the same. So this is strong, strong evidence, right, that the solution to this is the value negative 3.5. In fact, I would say strong evidence, it checked. Right? Negative 3.5 is a value that makes both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this expression the same. Um, we've done problems like this before, but we haven't seen a case where there's three different parts where I had to change the base for all three parts. And then the other new thing was right here, like once we've got that these are both base of 2, that we can combine these by adding the negative x with the 2x minus 4. All right, that's it for that problem.